morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for us here over throughout this week as we travel. Amen. We want to look for a few minutes this morning in Second uh, Peter chapter one. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. According to this divine power has given us all things that pertain to our lives and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us unto the glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises by, that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the lust, having escaped the corruption that's in this world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness. Brother of kindness, charity, for these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall know to be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of the of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we see here we need to be fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Right. Right. And then also again in Proverbs. 18 verse 15, the heart of the prudent seeketh knowledge, and the ears of the wise get it. the heart of the prudent get knowledge, and the ears of the wise seeketh knowledge. Mm -hmm. But we see today in our country there's a lack of fear of the Lord. That's right. In our country today, if this was not true, I don't think we'd be seeing the things that we're seeing today. We're seeing things that I never thought I'd see in my life. Yeah, right. And it seemed like every day it's just continually worse. But for the redeemed, we see in verse 3, according to his divine power, has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. We see in verse 3, the Lord has given us all things needed. Mm -hmm. He's given us all mm -hmm. things needed to live a life pleasing unto him. Mm -hmm. The one that has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Mm -hmm. right. The one that paid debt that I couldn't pay. Mm -hmm. The one that suffered and bled and died for my sins. Mm -hmm. But it's now risen and at the right hand of God making intercession for us. What a blessing. Amen. What a blessing we have in intercession today. To make an intercession for us. In verse 4, are given unto us exceeding the great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the, of the divine nature having escaped the corruption to this world through us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who the one has made it possible for us to receive these promises, to, for us to be partakers of the divine nature. When I think of all the Lord has done for me, not only in salvation, but every day is watching. Amen. Me the many blessings that he's bestowed, bestowed upon us, then I think about what did I really do for him in the service of the Lord? You know. How much time do I waste? How much time do I actually spend in the service of the Lord and the things of him, looking into his word, reading on his word? And often find myself falling short for the distractions of this world. So many different directions, everybody's pulling you in different directions. Right. And, uh, but we need to be, uh, in verse 5, and besides this, giving all diligence to add to faith, to your faith, virtue, and to virtue knowledge, mm -hmm. to giving all diligence, uh, not just part of the time, not just uh, when it's convenient, when you're not busy, but we need to be giving all diligence mm -hmm. and uh, adding. And growing mm -hmm. in the things of the Lord, in the things of the Lord, the, the redeemed need not live a life like this is all there is. This present time, this is all there is. The redeemed need to uh, we need to set our affections on the things above, not the things of this earth. Amen. We uh, we must give all diligence. We must be uh, mm -hmm. daily seek to give all diligence to add and to grow. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we go through 
verses 5 through 8, beside this, give all diligence to add to your faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, temperance, <coughs> patience, patience, godliness, to godliness, mm-hmm. brotherly love, to brotherly love, charity. If all, if all these be in you and abound, they make you where you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm-hmm. And we see we need to, not only to possess all these, but we need to abound in them, yeah. to overflow in us. So those that we come into contact with can see something different in mm-hmm. us than they see in the world. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 16, 17, 6, 17, where will come out from among them and be separate. There you go. We're not supposed to fit in. We're not supposed to uh, look like the world, act like the world, dress like the world. Amen. We're supposed to be exact opposite. We should stand out. They should see the difference in us. That's it. And uh, when they see this difference in us and they ask, it gives us the opportunity. It gives us the opportunity to witness to them. It gives us, uh, I remember in times past, somebody asking me, said, you work six days a week and you want to spend your only day off going to church. I said, there's no place I'd rather be. Amen. They don't understand because it's not been opened up to them. They uh, try. But we do need to stand out. We need to, we don't need to fit in. We need to be different. And uh, I know we just touched the highlights of this this morning. Did a practice service on that. We wanted to look at uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and you be established in this present truth. But I think it as long as I'm in this tabernacle, stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Though you know them and be established in this present truth, Apostle Peter thought it needful to always keep us in remembrance. Amen. And, uh, yeah. To stir them. I believe we be stirred on a regular basis. I guess most people thought we were uh, forgetful people as we see all through the Bible with the in the Old Testament. The, 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 the forgot what the Lord done for me didn't take very long and they they stray away. And uh, I believe we need to be stirred on a regular basis. Because we need to be established and then we need to be abounding in these things. Amen. If we're going to grow and abound in these things, we will uh, we have to be diligent. Not like so many people we see today that they think if they uh, do a Sunday morning service once or twice a month, they've done some kind of great service to the Lord. But uh, right. I don't believe that people will be seeing diligent and abounding in these things that we looked in there this morning that uh, they think they've done enough. That, uh, mm. They don't seek a life to serve the Lord, to grow, to be diligent. And that's where I've failed myself several times is in Paul Short, not to, you seek to be diligent, but the things of the world distract you and pull you to the side and take up too much of your time. And if we're not diligent to set time aside for the Lord and to uh, spend time in prayer to Him and spend time feeding on His Word, we I know that I'm not, uh, I don't miss many meals. I feed the flesh on a regular basis. So we need huh. to feed on the Lord's Word on a regular right. basis too. And uh, if not, we'll be weak, just like the flesh. If you don't feed the flesh, it's going to get weak. You're right. My Lord's word, we're going to get weak. And like the Apostle Peter, we need to always put our children, our grandchildren, our family, those we come in contact to in constant remembrance, always bring them to remembrance of these things. It's a... It tells us in Deuteronomy 6, 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Mm-hmm. And these words which I command you this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Thou shalt talk to them when thou sittest in thy house, and when they walk us by the way, and when they rise down, and when they rise us up. Amen. We need to be diligent in teaching them to our children. 
and in, in all the ways it describes her this verse, not just, you know, part-time or we need to be diligent when we walk us by the way, when we rise down, when we rise us up. My, uh, my dad was a quiet man. Uh, we was poor, never had a whole lot, but he had a love for the Lord. Amen. And uh, I remember several times growing up that he would look at me and say, you see what the Lord's done here? You see what the Lord has uh, <clears throat> took this situation and turned it around. And uh, at that time, it didn't mean that much to me, but to look back on it, as it got older, it's uh, you know, a testimony to me, the way he handled things in a way that uh, his love for the Lord mm-hmm. led him to live a life. Amen. Pleasing unto the Lord. Uh, we had a, a elder in the church who was a member at that time, and uh, he bought a piece of equipment we had, in, uh, or it's actually my dad's, and uh, brought it up. I mean, he, I, he, he knew that he'd done it. He just hit it and brought it back, and it was a real struggle for us at the time. And uh, I didn't understand it, you know, I was uh, worked up about it. <clears throat> but my dad never said a whole lot about it. <clears throat> but a year or two later, it was quite a while. The Lord used the same man to bless my dad four times over what uh, it cost to fix that piece of equipment. Amen. And I remember him looking at me and saying, see what the Lord down here? See what, what he's, how he's turning us around. And uh, as I get older and uh, have more years behind me as I got in front of me, I want to, uh, my children and grandchildren to be able to have these things. I wasn't never in this. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I thank the Lord that he gave me parents to uh, not only raise me in church, but to have a Bible study at home, to live a life that we could see uh, their love and their service to the Lord. And uh, mm-hmm. I hope that uh, Verse 14, I know shortly that I must put off this tabernacle for even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. The more old, after I will endeavor that after they may be ordered, after my cease to have these things always in remembrance. And uh, that's what my desire would be that after I'm gone, that they could look back on the. Uh, bring back to their remembrance things that, uh, that I look back in my life and see that my dad done and, uh, and the way that he handled things and uh, Amen. his service to the Lord is uh, a great blessing to me now. I hope now that what's going to happen is we look back on it and we can see his faith and uh, hopefully build off that and uh, bring to remembrance of things that uh, it's, it's helped us in our growing faith added to the things that we've seen mentioned here in these verses. And uh, we have to, it's a uh, it goes here, verse 5, we, we must give all diligence to add, to grow. Mm-hmm. We, uh, the Lord can just save us to set one pew. The Lord has got work for us to do. It's he intends for you to grow in his word and to, uh, to, be, a, to be a useful vessel. I know this has been a short lesson, and uh, I jumped around some, and uh, it's hard to get to chasing rabbits. But uh, I hope it's been a blessing to you. I hope Amen. you give me something out of this this morning. And with that, thought, we'll close. Amen. Yeah.